Riley's have around 4,000 tables for customers to play on. In most of our clubs, tables are the key reason that our customers visit, so your tables really need some attention from you every day. If the tables are poorly maintained, your customers won't be able to enjoy your club or play at their best, which means that they won't return. If you don't get your tables right, your customers will question every part of your business. Well-maintained tables will not only get your customers returning time and time again, but will also encourage them to stay longer. There will be fewer complaints to deal with, your customers will tell their friends about their good experiences and your business will grow. Let's have a look at what it takes to maintain our tables. Before we start, we need to make sure we have the correct equipment. We need cleaning cloth, approved multi-surface cleaner. We are using water for demonstration here. Table cleaning mask, rail brush, half moon brush, large table brush, toothpick, napping block, water in a fine spray gun, table iron, approved furniture polish, duster, marking tools, white pen. Cleaning a table starts at the shade or lights above it. This ensures you don't have to clean the table twice when dust falls onto it from the hood. The hood and lights are cleaned using a cloth or cleaning towel and the approved mild multi-surface cleaner. Make sure you spray the chemical onto the cloth or towel and not directly onto the bulbs, as water and electricity don't mix. You clean the bulbs with the bulbs off, but a surrounding light on, so you can see what you're doing. Don't stand or sit on the table. If you can't reach the underside of the shade or the bulbs, use a secure ladder to stand on. You should not be overstretching. Bulbs must be checked to make sure they are fixed securely and working. Now, with the lights on, you can fully clean the hood using the cloth or cleaning towel and approved chemical. It is important that you have the table light on now so that you can clearly see what you're doing. The next stage is brushing the table. Brushing tables removes dust and chalk from the cloth, known as bays. Before doing this, it is important to put on a table mask. Chalk dust contains a number of chemicals, including silicon. This can be dangerous if inhaled. You should check that the brushes are clean before using them, so you don't transfer dirt from them back onto the table. We start at the bulk end of the table, working down in the direction of the nap. The bulk end has the D on it. Brushing this way ensures we align all the fibres in the cloth which allows the ball to travel in a straight line. You can feel the nap of the cloth if you stroke the cloth, first in one direction, then in the opposite direction. The nap should feel flat when stroked away from the bulk end and rough if you try to stroke the opposite way, as all the fibres will lift up. Newer cloth will have slightly more raised fibres, so regular cleaning is all the more important to flatten the cloth and align the new fibres. We start by brushing the tops of the rails using the large table brush. Ensure you brush in the direction of the nap on the cushions too, using straight strokes, starting at the bulk end and working down the length of the table. It is important that you never let customers sit on the table, as they could damage the cloth, break the cushions, or affect the stability of the playing surface, causing uneven rolling of balls. This rolling and damage is often found on English pool tables in your club. Next, we need to get any remaining dust out from under the cushions. To do this, we use a rail brush, which is crescent-shaped to fit under the cushions, and flick the dust forward in the direction of the nap. Work your way forward with short, firm strokes. Using the large table brush, ensure you brush around the rim of each pocket. Don't forget to do the ends as well as the long sides of the table. Remove any stubborn marks with a clean, slightly damp cloth. Next we move on to brushing the main bed of the table. We use the large table brush, using short, firm strokes, moving all dust and chalk from the bulk end toward the other end. It is important not to press too hard in case there are any large grains of dirt on the cloth. This could tear the cloth if you were to press the brush too hard down on it. Short strokes are required to kick the dust up the table and keep the nap straight. 
always flick the dust forward and not up into the air, or it could just land where you flicked it from. It is easier to do this one half of the table at a time, slowly moving down the table. You will see a line created as you flick the light-coloured chalk forward. One long sweep up the table doesn't work. Trying to do it this way can press dirt into the fibres and not flick it forward. All of the dust from the table should now be gathered under the top cushion, opposite to the bulk end. This will need to be brushed, using the rail brush, into the top pockets. If you find you have a build-up of fluff between the top cushion and the table bed, you can remove it using a clean damp cloth or a toothpick. Care must be taken not to pierce or damage the cloth. As a consequence of brushing the dust into the pockets, you'll find that dust collects on the nets. To remove this dust, you need to use the large table brush to clean the pockets and nets. Before you go any further, wipe around the edges of the table with a damp cloth to remove any dust that may have collected there during brushing. Cleaning and polishing the surrounds of your tables should be carried out whenever the need arises, and not just when the tables are brushed. After brushing the table, you need to properly align the fibres and get rid of any chalk that has settled on your cleaned table. To do this, we use a napping block, which is simply a piece of wood covered with a piece of baize. Alternatively, you can wrap a lightly damp cloth around the large brush. Dampen the napping block using a clean water spray on its finest mist setting. It is important that the block does not feel wet. A damp block will flatten the nap and pick up excess chalk. A wet block may cause watermarks on the table and slow the ball during play. Starting at the bulk end, sweep the napping block up the table in one continuous push to the top of the table. You will see a difference in the line you have created straight away. Continue to do this until the whole table has been napped, brushing or dampening the block again after every stroke to remove any chalk dust stuck to it. The table must not feel wet after using the napping block. After cleaning and aligning the table nap, we need to iron it and get it as smooth and flat as possible. For this, we use a heavy table iron. Turn the iron on and leave it to warm in its stand. Take care, the base gets very hot. As always, we work from the bulk end up to the top of the table. Each stroke must be slow and continuous. Just a few seconds without moving can burn the cloth. The first iron stroke should have the iron pressed against the side rail, ensuring the cloth beneath the cushion is ironed. The iron is then turned at a slight angle, and each further stroke overlaps the previous, the angled iron ensures you do not end up with a striped table. The final stroke is again pushed against the side rail to iron beneath the cushion. When you have finished, the iron should be placed securely in its cradle and plugged in again to reheat, ready to iron the next table. With normal play and regular cleaning, the spots and markings on the table will become less clear. These must be checked every day to ensure the table is in the best playable condition. It's good practice to aim to mark a few tables each day to ensure they all remain at the highest standard. The spots where key balls are placed should be marked with a small white cross and the bulk line can be marked using the D template, the line marker and a white correction pen. Ensure the marker or template is clean and dry before placing it on the table. It is easier to get someone to help you, but if you're careful and follow the methods shown here, you can mark the table alone. Make sure you move the marker away from the line you have just drawn to avoid smudging it. The last cleaning job is around and below the playing surface. Clean the pocket rails and fittings with a damp cloth. Wooden tables can be cleaned with an approved polish and a duster, while metal sides and base, as found on American pool tables, can be cleaned with a multi-surface cleaner. When using polish, make sure you spray it onto the cloth and not the table itself. End the cleaning with a quick check of the floor around the table and pick up any rubbish or debris you find there. Finally, you can set up the balls and triangle ready for a customer to arrive at a table that looks great. After cleaning, it is always worth checking the other maintenance aspects of the table. You may need table repair needle, green thread, crosshead screwdriver, flathead screwdriver, pliers, 
Check that each pocket and ball net feels secure and run a ball into each to ensure the balls are caught in the nets. Minor repairs to split nets can be done with some string, but for large tears or excessive wear, you will need to replace the net. Replacement should be carried out by your table repair contractor. The leather around the pocket must be in good condition with no tears and fitted firmly, as poor pocket leathers will damage balls as they hit the metal pocket frame. Sometimes the leather strap supporting the ball rail breaks or becomes perished, causing balls to drop to the floor. Occasionally, the bolts holding the rails may work loose and get lost. To replace the leather strap, simply undo the nut and screw holding it and fit the new strap. You may find the odd small tear in the cloth. To prevent this becoming bigger and causing the table to be taken out of action, small tears can be repaired. Using the special needle, which has a bend at the end to allow it to come back up through the cloth, stitch the two sides of the tear together taking care to place stitches about 1-2mm to two millimeters apart, just enough to bring the two edges together. Finish off by stitching through the same area three times. The cues and equipment provided on and around the table are equally important to the customer experience. Check that each snooker table has a cross rest at either end, top and bottom, and a long cue and rest hung on the side of each table. The rests are supported by hooks. Check that all these hooks are in place and note any missing so that you can arrange replacements. All long cues must be in playable condition. They must be straight, be correctly tipped and be clean. You can use a dampened piece of cloth or cleaning towel to clean finger marks from the cues and rests. If your rests have plastic toes, ensure the toes are in place as missing toes can cause tears in the cloth. Over time, you should aim to equip your club with solid brass rest heads, which look better and last longer. Q racks next to the table should contain a supply of bridge, extended bridge and swan necked rests. One of each, shared between three or four tables, is sufficient. These are used infrequently compared to the cross rests at the end of the tables. Look around at the cues that are in the nearby cue racks, ensuring the correct cues are in the correct area. Snooker cues can be identified by their small, thin tips and brass ends, known as ferrules. Snooker cues are also used on English pool tables as they are designed for smaller, lighter balls. They should not be used on American pool tables as the brass ferrule can damage the cloth. American pool cues have larger, wider tips designed for larger, heavier balls. These should not be positioned near snooker tables as customers may pick them up in error. You must check to ensure tips are not worn too low or even missing altogether. Customers using worn cues will result in damage to your table surface. There should be four cues for every table. Scoreboards must have working runners, and the numbers should be clearly visible with the scoreboard lit when in use. Don't forget to regularly clean your scoreboards to remove finger marks. American pool tables have a different type of cloth, which does not have a nap. The fibres are much shorter, so the table purely requires brushing. Ironing is not required. It is, however, good practice to wipe the bed on American tables with a damp cloth purely to remove excess chalk that is resettled on the cloth. Check the pockets are secured and do not twist around or lift out. Each table must also have the relevant triangle, diamond or both available. English pool tables have a nap in the cloth, just the same as snooker tables. They are often used more than snooker, resulting in more wear and the need to brush, nap, iron and clean the table more regularly, sometimes brushing twice on the same day. Regular cleaning of balls will also help you maintain your tables. Balls should be cleaned in a small amount of weakly diluted warm soapy water and dried thoroughly. Cleaner balls run more quickly and look much more professional. Ball trays should also be cleaned regularly. Ensure when passing balls over to the customer that they are placed on a dry surface as liquid may be transferred onto the tablecloth staining it. Finally, let's have a quick look at table levelling. English pool tables may need levelling fairly often due to their weight and the need to move them occasionally. There are many ways to check the level and methods vary according to table style, 
but the general method we will use should help you identify if your table needs adjusting. First, place a ball at one centre pocket and with a cue, play it gently in a straight line towards the opposite centre pocket. This will show you if you need to adjust both legs at either end. Secondly, place a ball about 15 centimetres from a corner pocket and another from the corner pocket at the opposite end of the table on the same side. Then, aiming for the middle of the ball, hit one gently toward the middle of the other. If it rolls to the left, the leg on that corner needs lowering, to the right and it needs raising. Make the adjustment and check it again before repeating this in the opposite direction for the other corner and again on the opposite side of the table. Once you've made all the adjustments, do a final check from top to bottom diagonally. Adjusting the legs on the table depends on the style of table. Some, like this one, require a table jack to lift the table first and then the height is adjusted by turning the foot. Others have a nut fitted to the threaded foot and simply need turning with an adjustable spanner without the need to raise the table with a jack. Under no circumstances should you raise or lower tables by physically lifting them or by wedging card or similar items under the legs. Our customers appreciate well-maintained tables and will show their appreciation by visiting again and again. Cleaning a table properly will save you work in the long run. You don't want to have to clean it again when a customer complains about the quality, the cleanliness or that the balls are not running smoothly. Focus primarily on the English pool tables in your club. This will bring you some real rewards as existing teams will notice the difference and the teams they play against will notice the difference too. The best players, whether they are pool or snooker players, will only play on the best tables. They will travel to find venues with tables that support their skill. We need to be those venues, attracting new players who play a lot and will help build the reputation of your club with other players. Delivering quality is the main part of your job every day. Tables are crucial and now you know how to keep them looking at their best. With a little time and attention every day, the tables in your club will become the talk of the town.